What's up guys, it's Dwayne back again for another video, back again for the reaction. Today's a great, wonderful day because it's a Finland day. Finnish military service, legal duty for all Finnish men. Without further ado, let's get into this reaction. Let's go. Minulla kerron kaiken tarvittavan tiedon Suomen armeijasta ja asepalveluksesta. Ja ennen kuin aloitamme, muista tilata tämä kanava. Lepo! And I bet he's been in the, has he been in the military? If all Finnish men go into the military, he must have been in it as well. So in Finland, all the guys have to go to the army because in the constitution law of Finland, it is said that it is mandatory for Finnish men to do the Finnish army service. In English, this is called conscription. And conscription, conscription. starts in Finland when you reach the age of 18 and it will continue all the way until you reach the age of 60. And the whole thing wow. starts with the drafting. What? 18 to 60, does that mean they can call you to, to serve at any time between those ages? Or in Finnish we call it kutsunnat. Drafting is usually held kutsunnat. in every big cities and this is where all the conscripts are invited. All the basic information of the army is explained. The conscripts. The people will get the invitation to Kutsunat well in advance, and there's also a medical health checkup usually done back in school to in order to find out that you are eligible and you don't have any physical restraints for the army. Attending wow. the Kutsunat or attending the draft is actually a legal duty. So if you try to skip it, the police can come to get your ass to the event, or you can and you can also get fined for that. So make sure you don't miss it. See, that's the part that I'm just struggling with because it's like you have no choice but to be a part of the military. Like, you have no choice. What about people that have, like, moral, I don't know, morals, choices, like, stances, like, maybe they're religious and they don't believe in going to war and... I don't know. It's just... It's just what if you object to going? What happens then? Let me know in the comment section. <laughs> in this event, you also get assigned to the unit where you will be going to serve. And I was assigned to serve in Kainu Brigade in Kajani. And the important thing what you will Kajani. learn in the Kutsunat is that when you will start your army and where you will serve it. And also because it's a legal duty, there are some also some benefits. For example, if you have a job, your employee cannot terminate your contract just because you're going to army. And also the same thing goes, for example, to study. If you, for example, okay. get admission to university before the army, you can delay starting the university so that you can first complete the army and then go to study. And that is for... So it takes precedence. It, ta it takes uh, priority over everything. So they, they, you get a special, special leave because you're serving in the army. Everything pauses. That's good at least. Do you get paid? I'm guessing you get paid while you're in the army, right? Or the army, do the army pay you or do... Does your job still pay you when you're at the army? In the army, for example, what I did, and every year there. Oh, I should be reading this. You can delay starting university if you get what got admitted. Even your rank can be paid by the social services during your service. That's good. That should be the case, right? <laughs> if you're not, if you're not home because you're in the army, you should be able to come home and all your you know, belongings, your house, your, you know, your life is still there when you come back. Um, we don't look after our army members like that at all. They come back and <laughs> it's really bad. It's really, really bad. You don't get leave from work because you're going into the military. If you go into the military, it's seen as you're going to a, a another job and you will lose the job that you have and they will give your job to someone else. There's no, there's no job to come back to when you're in the British... Um, army there's no job so this is really good there's two waves of new rookies starting the army the first one is in january and the second one is in july and okay. i started my army in july 2010 in kaino brigade but how long you will be in the army there's three options as of today in 2018 there are three different lengths in the army that you can serve 165 days, 255 days, or 347 days. So which means... 100... Okay. Okay. Six months, nine months, or 12 months. The shortest service time is for the people who will only serve in private and file. 
positions, for example, like a gunner or grenadier and that kind of stuff. Special positions like military police or medic will serve the nine months. People who want to get like a leader training, like, you know, non-commissioned officer and stuff, they will do always one year. And the thing is that how this is decided? Well, there's every year there's like a certain quota for certain ranks or certain positions. In worst case, you might be forced to serve the 12 years if there's not enough volunteers for those ones. And this happens every year. Wow. And it's just like sh shit happens if you have to serve longer than you want. But what I did, I wanted to go with the 12 year, 12 months because you know, for example, my dad also did and, you know, because I wanted to get the official, the, the officer training and the leadership training because I thought it would be valuable and an ex interesting experience. So I was aiming for the 12 years right from the start. Now we know all the basic stuff. And so what happens on your first day? Well, the thing is because it's a legal duty, the government will cover everything and including also the transportation from your hometown to the service unit. And on your first day, there's nothing too crazy going on. You will just tell where you will, in which unit inside the brigade you will be. And I was assigned to be in the they shave your head. and more specifically in the mortar units. Once you arrive, so you will be there with your service place and you will get your first equipment and you will be taken to your accommodation. The army guys are accommodated in things, things we call tupa and there's around tupa. 10 to 12 people in one room. And you know, the service starts officially the next day once you get there. So on the first day, you don't have to worry about if you don't know anything and everything will be taught there anyway. So that's good. But that's wild. I, I don't know. I just, I just, it's really interesting that you have this, have this where it's like conscription is mandatory. Like every male in your country has to serve, but then you, you're very liberal on like other things. Like, um, just like, yeah, I don't know. I feel like this kind of mandatory serving your country, don't take this the wrong way, but it it sounds like how a country that is more kind of communist would be. Is that really bad to say? I'm sorry if you get offended, but it seems that way where it's kind of like you have no choice, but then, is that my way of thinking? Maybe it's serving mandatory is good because like you have to defend your country, especially you're bordering Russia and you need, you guys need everyone to be combat ready if, if something happens. So maybe it's different for you guys in Finland because of the fact that you have the threat of war on your doorstep uh, constantly. So you have to be ready. Hmm. So maybe I think about it differently actually. Yeah, maybe I do think about it different. I do think differently now. Now that I've <laughs> worked that through in my mind, you guys are bordered with Russia. So yeah, it would make sense that your government be like, yeah, everybody needs to be able to be combat ready if and when you ever get into any type of conflict with with them because they have a lot of military personnel. Um, so in that, in that logic, that reasoning, I get it. I get it. Um, yeah, I get it. <laughs> but the following morning. This is how the stuff will start. So the officers, you know, the non commiss officers will start yelling at you and telling you what to do and you need to start addressing them and everything. It's like really interesting change to your life because you will have to do exactly as you will be told. And for some people this is actually quite tough change, you know, because some people have just kind of got used to this kind of like easy lifestyle, but now you have to obey everything that you'll be told. You know, it mm. might sound like so crazy and difficult and, you know, because you don't know anything, but that's the, you don't have to worry about it because they will teach you everything. There's a lot of like lectures and training sessions where everything you need to know, Finnish soldier need to know. For example, military ranks, addressing high rank soldiers, basic weapon handling, basics of the Finnish army as an organization, physical exercise, marching, and so on. And next, I want to show you quickly a short conversation between two soldiers that are different rank because there's a few interesting things regarding the language used in the army. Let's have a look. Herra Ali Kersantti, Alokas Linna. Lepo. Mistä olette saaneet noin hienon paidan? Tämä on Fantastic Brandin uunituore merchandise-tuote. 
Oletteko ostaneet jo oman? Herra Alikadasti, en ole vielä, mutta mistä saisin lisätietoa asiasta? Ohjeet ja linkit verkkokauppaan löytyy tämän videon kuvauksesta. Käykää siis katsomassa tämän videon jälkeen. Eikö ne? Asia selvä, herra Alikadasti, ei muuta. A few quick interesting observations. When the rookie started the conversation, he said Herra Alikersantti alokas linna. Herra Alikersantti alokas linna. And Herra Alikersantti means Alikersantti alokas linna. Herra Alikersantti alokas linna. And Herra Alikersantti ah. means like me linna. Herra Alikersantti... I'm very sorry guys. I keep putting it back. I was trying to read it. Herra Alikersantti alokas linna. Did I say that right? I'm trying. I'm trying. He says it really quickly, so I can't really copy what he's saying, but I tried. Alokas linna. And Herra Alikersantti means like Mr. Alikersantti, so Mr. Soldier rank, basically. So that's how you always have to start to speak to a uh, higher rank. Mr. Then you introduce yourself by saying your soldier rank and your last name. So in this case it was Herra Alikersantti, Alokas linna. And this is interesting because in Finland we usually just talk to people with their first names and there's like mm. no hierarchy whatsoever in workplace and stuff but in army we all I remember he saying that he said that in another video that you guys use each other's first names even in a professional uh working environment because there's no hierarchy but obviously in the military it's completely different that must be such a shock to the system when you leave you know your normal life and then you enter this this place where it's very disciplined and there's that hierarchy and you have to report to your you know the sen the senior staff members or senior military personnel and it's got to be difficult you always refer or address each other with their last name and this is kind of like a japanese style because in japan people always talk to each other with their last name except of course you know like family and friends and that kind of stuff but yeah it's okay. kind of interesting mistä olette saaneet noin hienon vaidan And here's the second thing I want to point out. As you can see, the rookie said, Mr. Olette saaneet. And this means that where Mr. have you got it. in plural form, but he is only talking to a one person. Well, in Finnish, we have this polite form if we want to address someone politely when we want to use the plural you form. And this is pretty much similar to the, in German, we have the Z form. And this works pretty much the same. But this is rarely used nowadays. But in the army, we are we actually have to use this in order to address the person formally and with respect. But what about money? There's no salary, but there is daily allowance. Between the first and 165th day, the conscripts will get 5.10 euros a day. Okay. Between 166 and 255 days, they get 8.5 euros a day. And between 256 and 347 days. Wait, five, five, five euros? Eight euros a, le a day? Is that, that can't be right. That's nothing. The conscripts will get 11.9 euros a day. And because it's a, it's daily allowance, it's non-taxable and it will be paid twice a month. And this also include the holidays when you are not in the army. That's not a lot of money. About holidays, can you ever get out of the army? Well, the answer is yes, and actually there's quite a lot of holidays from the army. Usually it's every other weekend, and the government will provide okay. the free transportation to home and back to the unit. And sometimes there's even like longer holidays, let's say like Christmas or like midsummer, and there might be some bigger ones. And actually you can also earn some free holidays if you are doing your service well. The two first okay. months are this basic training, where the rookies get taught everything the basic stuff like I said like the weapons handling rookie ranks addressing the high rank people and so on and after that it will be decided how long you will be staying in the army if you manage to get the, the easy way you will just you will get like a just a basic training and you will sell four more months which is the six month if you want or can I just say I said this already but like it's it's amazing that you guys basically all the men in your country know how to handle a firearm It's a bit like America, right? But only in America, it's not man mandatory for everyone to <laughs> to go. They don't have so in America, everyone can handle a firearm, but not in the proper way, not the proper technique of. Because <laughs> some of them are like they've never had any military training. It's just that guns are just read readily available everywhere, and people have access to guns, but they hold guns like this sideways instead of with two hands, right? So they, they all know how to handle a gun. They've all handled a gun or they all have access to guns. But you guys have proper military training with 
firearms. So if there was a invasion, say, of Finland, and the Russian army, let's just say, for instance, just marched into Russia, if you guys had firearms, you'd all all of your men in your country, and you all know how to handle the firearms. That is a, an advantage of of Finland. So well done. That's uh, that is handy. Or you get assigned to a, like a special rank and file mission, like medic or military police. Then it will be nine months in total, so seven more months. And if you want to get the officer training, then you will be sent to the officer training school where I also went, and it will be eleven more months for you. Once the rookie period is over, I was sent to the non-commissioned officer school and that lasts four months and during that time you will be taught all the necessary things that you need as a leader and you also get the specialized knowledge and skills in your own mission and in your own position and for example i was trained to be a mortar squad leader so i learned all the basic stuff about mortars and leadership stuff and there's a lot of different stuff which is that's what i was was taught after i finished the school with other students, officer students there, and I was promoted to a corporal. And actually, it's quite interesting because in Finnish, we say aliker or something, which is like an under sergeant, but in English ranks, Alicara it's called cor corporal. And in Finnish, corporal is actually one level oh. lower than the aliker or something. So don't get mixed up with that. Ah, After okay. the first six months, I was a corporal or aliker or something. And what happens next that when the new wave of rookies will come, the people who just got out from the officer school start training those new rookies. So that's how it actually goes. Uh -huh. So when I went there, I was trained by the people who had already gone through the officer school, but now I was the one who was kind of teaching the basic stuff. And of course, there's some, you know, the, you know, the hired soldiers, soldier, like your lieutenants and other stuff that, who are actually taking care of the everything. But we conscripts also have to train the rookies if you go to the leadership route. And when the new people mm. came, they had their basic training session, the two months. It's, as you can see, it's kind of like a cycle. There's like a six month cycle, you know. When new people come, some will go to the officer school, some will just stay the four months. And the people who complete the officer school from the previous cycle will start to train the new rookies when i had trained the new rookies for two months then i formed my own squad and we started to practice the stuff together as so i was the leader and i had five underlings in my team basically the rest okay. of the time it's just like more exercises more training more camps and there's also a lot of stuff actually in the nature so we have to stay all basically the conscription is only for like a short amount of time. You don't have to stay after you've completed your six months or your, your 12 months or whatever you decide to do or whatever they decide that you do. After that, then you can go home and do and do whatever you want to do. So it's just basically getting everybody combat ready. <laughs> basically, every every Finnish man is combat ready. That's what that's what you that's what this is. Wow. Go outside, sleep over in the forest and, you know, Kind of practice the real war situations for example we have to have guard shifts and you know put camouflages over the tents and everything so it's pretty good and all in all i think the army was pretty good experience you know there was a lot, some really tough stuff when i look back on, on those experiences and memories i think like man it's so cool that we managed to go through those hard times and managed to overcome the obstacles and also learn those pretty useful leadership stuff for example the employers if, you, if it says on your cv that you have taken the officer school mm. they will give you some plus points because it means that you have some leadership skills leadership what skills about? so the transferable skills in 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 the wider world right you go out and say you have been in the military i was in an officer position i have leadership and training skills so when you go for any type of job that looks really good on you get it understand i understand that okay and then obviously some probably if you go to for a job and the manager has also gone through the exact same training as that and he's gonna look at you favorably because he'll know what it took to get to that point right he'll be like i got to that point as well i went through all that training as well and i know what skills you have so it will look good on you if you've also trained to that level does that make sense <laughs> about if you don't want to go to the army is there any other way well actually there is and we call this civil service or sivari and basically what this Sivare. means that you first take a one month training period and then you work for 11 months for a non-profit organization with oh. the same daily allowance 
as the conscripts do. So you don't earn any salary, just a daily allowance. And this is always a one year thing, so it's not necessarily an easier way to do this because you, because you can do the army in six months only. Uh. And depending where you do your civil service, it might be not so easy because they might not offer you accommodation and you still kind of have to, you know, buy some food and stuff. Unlike in the army, because in the army, you, all the equipment, food, accommodation, everything is... Co ah, so you can do civil service instead of the army. So civil service will be working for the government in some, some sort of way, right? Ah, so you can opt to not be in the military, but he's saying it's not as good because you don't get your accommodation and your food paid for. It's co covered for you. So it's not necessarily the easier way. And one last thing I want to say is that some people think that real men go to the army and, you know, like wimps and pussies kind of do the civil service. But <laughs> if you ask me, like, if you want to go to the army or if you want to go to civil service, that's fine. As long as you know what you're doing and you're content with your decision, that's okay. And that, for example, one of my good friends has done civil service. He's a cool dude and all, but there is this kind of kind of social pressure to go in the present army. in Finland as well regarding the army mm. and civil service. There's probably like a bit of a stigma, right? Or like you are looked down upon, like he said, as a wimp or a pussy if you don't go through the military training. Let me know in the comment section if you went through the military or you went the civil service route um it's really good you have that route uh so that you know people that are just against going into the military don't, they don't have to go into the military that's really really good hmm hmm i'm thinking if you if you went to an employer and you said that you went to do civil service instead of military would your employer look at you less favorably hmm. let me know in the comment section that's really interesting i just find this all really fascinating because obviously in the UK it's not it's not a thing. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Until the next one, I will see you very soon.